love for the king or his troops could I do for you and for my son? Please. Sire, where is this? He is safe, Ruth. Now, please, I must go. Safe? Safe? What do you mean, safe? Where is he? Ruth, he is safe and he is being detained <coughs> along with others, still sympathetic to Fat George. Sorry to tell you this, but you know, Benjamin makes no secret of his loyalties, and in a day such as this, that makes him dangerous, and it places him in danger. We have many neighbors quite willing to respond to a cry of God save the king with a musket shot. With Benjamin in James Reed's custody, we can at least spare him that. Ruth, this is the best course. Oh, I suppose that is true. Does Benjamin not realize what danger he is in? I've heard him say, I'm an officer in the New Hampshire militia, and I'm not obligated to join you. Did he not hear what other men said of him? Did he not hear their threats? I should hope so. Benjamin has angered many people merely with his attitude. He is a bit too proud of marrying that Rolf woman and the status it has brought. And he feels he is far more intelligent than his fellows, and he loses few opportunities to tell us so. And apparently, he thinks this great intellect makes him impervious to a bayonet or a musket ball. Oh, I am no, no one is there at Oh, I realize he speaks too proudly of being a gentleman of the Hampshire home. I know he has been indiscreet in praising the king, but surely his life is not dangerous simply for his enemies. Ruth, I wish I could spare you this, but it's more than his top loftiness that has put him at risk. We have reason to believe that he has passed on information to that dog, General Gage. Ruth, it pains me to say this, but the lobster backs could be on their march partly because of Benjamin's help. We don't know exactly who supplied the information that prompted them, but he has been an informant in the past, and if that becomes common knowledge, I dare not say where that might lead. <laughs> Perhaps you are right, my dear. At least he will be safe in Reed's custody. Major Baldwin has made it abundantly clear to all that Benjamin is not to be harmed. He's a bit too fond of Benjamin to allow that. Oh, thank goodness for Loami. I only wish that when he and Benjamin were in Cambridge together, some of Loami's level-headedness rubbed off on Benjamin. Well, perhaps now, Benjamin will learn more from Major Baldwin's example that from all those Harvard lectures. Ruth, I must ask you now, please go home, stay indoors. I must go, there is rough work to be done. Be wary, Josiah, stay safe. I may lose Benjamin over this, but I cannot lose you as well. Go home, my dearest. Next to me, under full arms and accoutrement. Mm -hmm. And they say, sir, sir, are you heading towards Lexington, towards Concord? And I said, well, well I am, I'm on my way to Boston. Can you please give us a ride? We must get there. It is urgent. And I said, what seems to be the matter? And they say, we not know exactly what it be, except that it is some sort of agreement. The sun is not yet up. They leave my horse and cart, and they go directly into the tavern. I say to myself, well, there's a long way to Boston. I might as well go into the tavern as well. So I set my horse and cart behind the tavern and go into the tavern. <laughs> what should I see there? But all of these militiamen, fully armed, accoutred, drinking ale. Good courage, a nice pint of ale, I said to one of them. Good courage, yes, good courage, while they are drinking ale. I, I try to find out what's going on. We know not. We are, we are told it is an alarm. We must be here. We must see Captain Parker, etc., etc. This is madness. Why? What is... And next thing I hear, I hear the sound of drums. Now, I say not drum, I say drum. It is a full regimental band of His Majesty's troops. I know this well because I served in the last war. I served in His Majesty's army when we were fighting the French. The French. <laughs> I hear this. So I leave the tavern and I look outside. And what do I see? To my surprise, but hundreds of His Majesty's troops approaching the column. In front is the light infantry in a long line. And they begin to wheel and block entrances, exits to the green. The next thing I hear, someone is pounding a drum near the tavern, and all of these good men are leaving the tavern and going onto the green, saying, take your place. 
Take your place. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Remember, remember, stand your ground. It, and I say to one man as he's leaving the tavern, I say, what are you doing? This is madness. You are going to fire on His Majesty's troops? You are going to spit in the face of your God-given sovereign? What madness is this? He pushes me out of the way and goes onto the green. I'm under arms and I want no part of this. So I stand to the side of the tavern. The next I see, it's a man on a horse. Come riding out. He's a Marine. I can tell him. White facing, red regimental. He's on his horse. And he's screaming to these other farmers and men of the militia. Disperse ye rebels. This is your last opportunity. Leave the green. Now! They do not. They say, no, no, no. More words are exchanged. I hear the sergeants in His Majesty's troops saying, hold your ground, hold your fire, make yourself ready, check your dress. Things that I know well from being in the army myself. Then, someone... Samuel told me when they brought my Daniel back to me that Ashel had died as well. Now we are truly at war with the king. I dare say who would know that better than the two of us? The truth could not come at a more dreadful form than what we have seen here today. I would have never thought when my Daniel left in the morning to begin the call to arms that by day's end he would be brought back to me lifeless. Samuel, Samuel told me that Daniel tried, along with several other men, to stand against the king's troops at Hotwell Tavern. They were sore outnumbered, being fired upon from several positions. Caught in the crossfire, and my Daniel fell with a shot to his back. Oh, Abigail? No, Abigail, you mustn't. Abigail, no. Do you mean to say that Ashel died with a shot to his back as well? Oh, what fine and honorable men that His Majesty has in his service. Our men, our good and brave men, being brought down like dogs that will not fall to heel. Are we to be thankful to the king for bringing such gifts to us in the colony? I only wish I could take up Daniel's musket and return the gifts to the king's fine warriors in time. Phoebe, please, I'll have my brother take you home. Home? Come home? Home to where my husband lies dead in my house? Home to where my son is struck dumb from the sight? I should come home for that, Abigail? 